Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord, amen? Hey, how many women do I have in the house that had an amazing night last night? Let me hear you. Come on, somebody. Who's ready for a double dose? I know you are. Amen. Guys, it's your turn this morning. Come on, guys. You ready? I know you're ready. We're going to hit everybody this morning, but it's good to be here. If it's your first time at Bethesda Church, welcome. We're so glad you're here. In the uh, pew pocket in front of you, you'll see a connect card. Would you just fill that out for us? We'd love to connect with you. And just leave it on the pew, and we'll collect that after service. We'd love to send you something in the mail this week and let you know how awesome it is to have you. Also, everybody online this morning, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we're grateful that you're doing that. And if you're ever in the Oklahoma City area, come see us in person. We'd love to meet you. And uh, just a few more announcements. Hey, we had a great night, like I said last night, with Unite Conference. This morning kicks off the refreshing. How many are thirsty this morning? Amen. This morning, 10 a.m., tonight, 6 p.m., Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at 7 p.m. Praise the Lord. Y'all must have been raised in church, most of you. Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, but it's going to be good. We're looking forward to it. And in the house this morning, we got Aaron and Amanda Crabb. Come on, and Miss Becca, all the way from Nashville. Amazing job last night. They're going to be ministering here in a little bit. Also, don't forget, we have our Connect group starting next Sunday. So as you leave today, go out in the foyer. There is a wall pocket with all of the different Connect groups. Take a look at those. Make sure you get connected with that. And also grab a ministry directory. In this ministry directory, you'll find all the Connect group options and all the different things about Bethesda Church. So make sure you grab one of these as you leave today. Amen. It's going to be a great day. Are you ready? Come on, stand on your feet. We're so glad you're here. The King of kings and the Lord of lords is in this place. When we were rehearsing this morning, I barely got through it because the presence of God was so real. I love what the Word of God says. It says here in 1 Chronicles 16, 34. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, and His mercy endureth forever, forever and ever. How many are part of that forever this morning? Come on. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise, a standing ovation. And let's thank God for what he's done. Amen. Amen. Keep those hands going. Who we worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wandering to the Lord. Just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting. A vagabond. Oh, I love this. And just when I ran out of the road, I met a man I didn't know. And he told me. But to believe my doubts are burning Oh, like ashes in the wind So, so long to my old friends Come on! Burden and bitterness You can just keep them moving No, you're not a welcome here Hallelujah! From now till I walk the streets of gold I'll sing of how you saved my soul this wayward son has found his way back oh, oh, oh. you pick me up Come on. you turn me around you place my feet on solid ground I thank the master I thank the savior because you heal my heart you change my Savior, I thank God. Who's 
ready to testify. Hell lost another one. Come on. you thankful he gave you a new name you're not Sarai anymore you're Sarah amen praise the Lord sister Amanda taught us that last night amen you've got a new name the father has sealed you with the blood make him your savior this morning if you haven't already turn your life over to him but we're so glad you're here this morning how many are ready to give and worship according to what the Lord has asked us to do aren't you thankful that when we're obedient he opens up the floodgates. He opens up the windows to heaven. And he loves you so much. 
And I'm thankful for this church and your faithfulness and your continued generosity. Missionaries each and every month are supported because of you. This altar was filled with women seeking God last night because of people like you. We were able to do things like that. I just want to say thank you because you get it. You understand. And if you're here this morning and maybe you haven't put the Lord first in your giving and you're like, I don't even know what you're talking about, Pastor Michael. Just very quickly, he only asked for 10%. So if you get $100, $10 goes to the Lord. You say, what do you mean? How do I give it to him? Well, you just bring it to the offering. You put it in there and you say, Lord, I give you the first fruits, not the leftovers. I give you the first fruits. And whatever you give to him first, he will bless. And you're like, man, I can't live without that 10%. Guys, that 10% will bless the other 90. And it will overflow into an expression of thanksgiving and praise. And God will begin to open doors for you that no man can shut. You'll go home one day and say, baby, you, I can't believe what happened. I got a raise today. I, I wasn't even expecting it. How many of you have ever went to the mailbox and got a refund from your insurance company that you didn't even know was coming right in the nick of time. It's because of your faithfulness. He always provides. So, Lord, as we come this morning and we give our offering to you, Lord, may it be a sweet aroma, our heart of thankfulness to say, Lord, we trust you, not only with our hearts, but also with our finances. So, Lord, I pray for miracles to take place in this house this morning. For doors to open because of their faithfulness, God. Each and every week, I see people that you would think, Father, they don't probably have much to put in here, but it's not about the amount, it's about the heart. So God, honor them today, as you did with the widow and the might that she gave. Lord, use this offering to further your kingdom and your cause to reach this generation for your son. And Lord, we give you the praise for it. And we come this morning with gratitude. In Jesus' name, amen. Won't you come as we sing? All my words fall short. I've got nothing new. How could I express my gratitude? I could sing these songs. As I often do, but every song must end.
your son. Cause you've got a lion inside of your lungs. So get up. one great choir. Come on. And I, except for us, we sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just soak in his presence for a moment. to his. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. May it be a sweet, sweet sound.
to someone that has everything. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh, those were wonderful gifts. But he didn't come to this world for those gifts. He came for their heart. So we give you our heart today, Lord. We bow to you, the undefeated one the champion of our faith, our life, our soon coming king. Miss Becca, would you come? What an anointing on this young lady's life. And she's about to declare with this worship team, we serve a champion that has never lost a battle. He loves you this morning and he wants to fight for you. Let him fight for you this morning. Raise your hands up in this place. We thank you, you've never lost a battle.
And giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won, and I am who you say I am. You've crowned me with confidence. I am seen in the head with the one. in this house this morning. Lift your voice. Shout out to God with a voice of triumph. We've been made more than conquerors through him that loved us. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you this morning, Father. For we are the head, not the tail. We are from above, not beneath. And your blessing and your favor chases us down and overtakes us 
And the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives and dwells inside of every one of us, speaking resurrection power in every need, in every situation, in every storm. For we are fearfully and wondrously made. And there is no weapon that is formed against us that will ever prosper. For if God be for us, who can be against us? Put your hands together and bless his mighty, mighty name. So, Father, we are so grateful to be able to stand on ground that has been hallowed by your own presence. And we love you from the deep, from the deep of our heart. But you have redeemed us and rescued us. You have pulled us from the pit. God, when nobody believed in us, when we didn't even believe in ourselves, you never gave up on us. And if any man be in Christ, all things have passed away and all things have become brand new. We are a new creation. Hallelujah. We are a new creation in you. The old is gone. The new has come. The dark has passed and the light shines upon us. That day star from above. Father, I pray in the name of your Son and in the name of our Savior that you will open the heavens above this house and above every house that's exalting and magnifying that name that is above every name. We pray that you will extend your mercy and open your heavens above our, our nation. We pray for our leaders. God, I pray that you will break out in this house but you will break out in the White House. God, we pray as we seek your face and we turn from our wicked ways, God, that we will hear from heaven and you will come and heal our land, forgive our sins. Father, in Jesus' name, I just pray for a healing anointing to flow through this house. And God, bring healing to every hurting heart. God, mend the brokenness. God, rebuke the fear, dry the tears. We pray, God, a special anointing upon Brother Amanda, Sister Amanda, Brother Aaron, as they come to share the word in just a moment. We pray, God, that you will just elevate them into the heavenlies. And, God, that they'll be more than just a minister this morning, but they will be a mouthpiece of God. And that we will receive the word, the living word of God, that that seed will fall into good soil and it bring forth fruit that, and fruit that remains for the cause of your kingdom. And God, we lift our hearts and hands in praise. And we love you, deeply love you. And we give you all thanks for it in Jesus' name. And all the church said, amen. You may be received. Amen. Would you join me on the stage, Aaron and Amanda? So glad you're here this morning. Continue in this moment. Sweet presence as they come to minister. I could read a bio. I could do all that, but I just let's just stay here right now. They're just family. Amen. Come on, just lift your hands in this place. Sweet presence. You can stand if you feel like it. If you don't, that's fine too. Your blood is a rescue to the sin-stained life. Your blood is healing to the hopeless and broken. Your blood is enough. Jesus, it's enough. Your blood is a shelter in the middle of my storm. Your blood is my refuge when I'm hurting and alone. Your blood is enough. Jesus, it's enough. 
Lift your hearts, lift your hands and sing it out. It's renewed, restoring, saving and healing, delivering, counting, setting us free. It is life everlasting to all who receive in your blood. It's more than enough. It's more enough to heal you this morning. It's more than enough. Your blood, your blood. Your blood is a rescue to the sin stained life. Your blood is healing to the hopeless and broken. Your blood is seen now. This is how you receive. Lift your hands like this. That's how you receive something. It's more than enough to heal. If you need healing, just lift your hands and receive healing right now. If you need the peace and joy in his presence, just lift your hands right now. Become a landing strip for the scroll right now. A landing strip. Hallelujah, God. It's renewing, restoring.
that speaks greater things than that of Abel. Yeah, yeah, it is yeah. that blood of sprinkling that brought our dead work conscious into his life. Come on, just lift it up. Maybe you need a fresh drop of that sprinkling this morning. Come on, he's here. He's in the room. We've already felt the move of God. But don't let this moment pass you by. Come on, somebody needs to begin pleading the blood over your family. Somebody needs to begin pleading the blood over your city. Somebody needs to begin pleading the blood over this nation. Come on, the blood of Jesus will speak when the enemies are trying to rise up, but they cannot rise against the blood of Jesus. Come on, he's moving, he's shifting, he's restoring, he's bringing death. fruits of your lips bless the name we praise you Lord we give you glory we give you glory come on some of us need to stir that gift up right now God you're enough God you are enough to conquer every obstacle in this nation God you're enough for every plague of the enemy. God, you're enough, and your blood is enough. Yeah, your healing is more powerful. You are greater. You are stronger. You are wiser. And we praise you and give you all glory this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give the family a hand, amen, for your seat in this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Amanda and Becca. If I could have the ushers come forward. How, how many are ready to sow into some good soil this morning? I'm thankful that they were willing to accept an invitation. That's not easy. You see, they've got a church back home that's missing their pastors today and their worship leader. But the Lord put this together, and I'm so glad he did. Because last night, we, we had a burial. We had a funeral for a lot of ladies. 
If you would have walked in this place and had no idea what was going on, you would have, you would have called some ambulances because they were laid out all across this floor underneath the power of an almighty God. Because there were some deaths yes, last night, but then there were some resurrections. Because when they got up out of the power of God, they were not the same as they came in. So thank you again for a wonderful ministry last night and letting the Lord use you. Thank you, Miss Veda, for putting that all together, your heart, your vision for the Father, for his kingdom, for the ladies of Bethesda is remarkable. So thank you for all you do, for all the volunteers. You're amazing as well. Thank you for everything you did. But today, can we give to the Lord and can we bless this couple and this young lady? Amen. Father, we thank you for Aaron. Amanda, for Becca, and God, we just pray that what we sow into their ministry today, Lord, we continue to bless, continue to further your cause and your kingdom, in Jesus' name, amen. If you're making out a check, just make it out to OKC Bethesda, or just Bethesda will be fine, and we'll write one check at the end, amen. Praise the Lord. Yesterday, but I had a jacket covering that up, you know, because if my home folks see that, I might get in trouble. But I want to thank them for their hospitality, their generosity. We don't take it lightly. We're very thankful for Veda as well uh, for having Sister Amanda in last night. Listen, last night, I hate following last night. I'm just going to tell you right now. It was so powerful. It was so tangible. It was very heavy. Anybody ever felt the heavy presence of God? You ever felt that? If you haven't, I pray you feel it this morning. I pray. It's like the weighty presence of God. Like it's hard to stand in the presence of God. It's that kind of, it's what the word says. If you look up the roots, it's the kabod. That kabod, the heavy presence of God. And I believe that we're going to see those times of refreshing as of that. That, you know, the same, the Old Testament, when they talked about, they couldn't even enter into the temple because the glory was so strong. 
and they lay prostrate in the streets. How many like to see some sinners be drawn to the presence, but it seems strong, so strong, it be so strong and tangible that it changes them for the rest of their lives. How many believes one moment in God's presence can do that? No, come on, somebody. How many knows that one moment in the presence of God will change your life? It'll change everything about you. It'll change your mind. It'll change your heart. And that's the moment of refreshing that God is releasing in this moment, in this hour. It's not about what he did yesterday, but what is he doing in you today? How, how, how uh, fiery is your spirit today? Come on, somebody. Let's just get right down to it. Sometimes you got to stir yourself in the Lord. I know that I do. But if after all these years, can you still be hungry? If you'll turn with me the book of Mark, chapter number 5, verse 27, we're going to read one verse. We're going to look at this verse just for a moment. And it says this, when you get there, it says, I hear pages turning, well, I'm going to wait. Thank God for pages that are turning. Amen. I was guilty last night. I had my phone out. And it says, when she heard about Jesus, can we just say that name real loud in this place? What's his name? She heard about him. Turn to your neighbor and say, they must hear about him. When she heard about Jesus, she came. Now, now I want to look at that just for a moment. She couldn't have came, she, she wouldn't have come if she'd not heard first. She had to hear about Jesus before she had the opportunity to come to him. How many knows there's no wonder without his word? So she, when she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind him in the crowd. And the Bible says that she touched his garment. How many would like to touch Jesus today? Heavenly Father, I ask for your help, your wind, your spirit, Father, in this place, in this vessel, in every vessel that is in this place. May there be a wind of direction. May there be a wind of a supernatural uh, detailed knowledge that only comes from you. May there be clarity where there's been chaos for the last couple years. God, I pray for chaos. I pray for chaos to cease and I pray for clarity, Lord Jesus, to open up to every heart, to every spirit, to every mind. And we rebuke the devourer right now in the name of Jesus. Everything that's trying to lack and limit your people for year after year after year. That same perpetual situation, that mountain that we've continued to walk around. I hear a headed north in the spirit that there is something. I, I look for somebody to look up because your redemption is drawing nigh. I said your help is in the house and God is about to transition a thing in this place and we thank you and we give you all the glory and all of the praise in Jesus name amen and amen you may be seated in the presence of the Lord I'm going to try to uh, unpack this message I will say I love, a, I, I love an instrument because when you have a prophetic thing it kind of pushes and the, and the Bible's clear that sometimes Prophets would call. I'm not saying I'm a prophet, but there is a prophetic unction sometimes that will come. And uh, the prophets would call for the, uh, the minstrel to come and play so that there would be a flow. There would be a flow. You see, the enemy wants you to uh, be distracted, and so he'll try to get you uh, distracted in his flow. Right? But when you get into the flow of the Spirit, it's like the current's so strong that it just breaks through every stronghold, every barrier. And uh, this message, I believe, is very prophetic for our times. I know it's very uh, familiar to a lot of us. But I want to try to look at some things. The, 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 
the word here that says that she pressed. She pressed behind. And we've heard this so many times, pressing. She pressed through the crowd. She pressed through the people because she heard about Jesus. And as I mentioned, that you, you can never receive the wonders of God or experience the wonders of God until you hear the word of God. It's one thing to get in the presence of worship to him, but it's another thing to hear him speak. Uh, it's one thing to hear about him, but it's another thing to hear him for yourself. And so there's something that happens when you hear about Jesus. Maybe you heard about a good old red hot revival service that was going on down at the church house and somebody told you about miracles and things that were taking place and maybe there might be, just might be somebody who heard about that little pack of dynamite that preached last night and things happened because of obedience and God transformed and healed and changed lives last night and it's that hearing of what God can do that draws us into his presence so that we can hear him for ourselves. So we heard about, she heard about Jesus, and the Bible says that when she heard, she came in, she pressed behind, and she reached out, and she touched his garment. There will only be a miracle when there is a message delivered. There will only be a miracle when there is a message delivered. You can never have a wonder without a word. You can never have a miracle without his message. Come on, somebody. And when we know that this woman, she had suffered for long, uh, she had been subject to some bleeding. Uh, Amanda got on the tail end of this at the, at the end of her message last night. But she had suffered. We know the story. She was subject to bleeding for 12 years. Years. How many knows 12 is a very significant number? 12 is the number of government. It's the number of order. It's also the number of perfection. It's a perfect number. It is the number of the power and the authority of God. How many knows timing is everything? See, that number is very specific. It's very important. I, I, used, I didn't used to get caught up, and I didn't realize that numbers were so important until the last few years God has really been pinpointing and showing me numbers in the Bible. And I want you to understand that this number 12, God was preparing her for this very divine moment that there would be change. There would be change. There would be an alignment in her body. How many knows that there's been an alignment in the body of Christ? And that there's a governmental order. I don't want to get off on something here, but there's a govern. God has been aligning the, the governal uh, experience of God because there will never be glory without the government of God. There has to be government before there will be the flow of his glory. Are you following me today? So this is very important because it talks about a flow. It talks about a polluted flow. The enemy has one. He wants to curse you with the flows of wickedness. He wants to curse you and tell you this is who you were created to be and that you will never change, that you will always be polluted, that there will never be a clean stream that will flow from you, right? But, but Jesus said that there is a priesthood that will rise up and it's the priesthood of the sons of Zadok. If you want to look through the scriptures, you will understand that there is a holy priesthood. There is a pure priesthood that I believe that God is raising up in this moment. And it's only for one reason, because they chose to press through the crowd just to get to Jesus. And when you touch Jesus, how many knows he aligns your body? He removes the things that need to be removed from our life. And so the bleeding happened for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal. She had went to many physicians. She had spent all that she had, yet in spite of her spending, she got worse instead of getting better. Have you spent so much time trying to fix things over here, over there with natural things, natural physicians? Listen, this is our times right now. All over in hospital rooms, people are being hooked up to ventilators. And I'm going to tell you what it is more than anything. It's the spirit of fear that the enemy has placed on God's people. But I'm here to tell you that all the medicine you need, now I'm, I'm not knocking doctors and physicians. God uses them every day and is using them right now, but how about we get to the medicine of the message? How, how about we get to the miracles of God's word? Because I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ is the same Jesus that he was with this woman of issues. He's the same God who can heal you 
of whatever it is that you are facing physically today. So there is a touch that takes place and she had spent all of this and spent all of that trying to fix it over here, trying to fix it over there and she got worse instead of gets better. How many knows in our own strength will always make matters worse? Come on, somebody. In my own strength, I am nothing without Christ. I am weak. I am a worthless worm. But when I surrender and I lean in and I yield to the Holy Spirit, then all of a sudden, how many knows that he has mysteries in your heart that he begins to make known unto you. He begins to use you. He begins to change you. He begins to change the way that you walk. He begins to change the way that you speak. And it's only because of his spirit. It's not by might nor by human ability. Let's say it the way it needs to be said, power of man, power of natural things, but it's by the Spirit. Somebody say it's by the Spirit. Come on, somebody. It's time to get the spirit back into the church. Hallelujah. It's time to, I said, it's time to get God's movement back into his message because you can have information all day long but never be, have transformation. But I'm here to tell you, it's not just the graphe word of God, just the information of God, but it's having the Lord of the Logos. It's having that Logos word that changed and transforms your life. Is there anybody in this place that had it not been for that Logos moment in your life, you would be lost and undone, you would be hooked up on drugs, you would be in a mess in your marriage, but because somebody delivered a Logos word that changed your life. How many knows what a Logos word is? A Logos word is that, uh, the Logos is the full word, but then there's also not just the Logos word, the fullness of a relational uh, relationship with Jesus, but how many knows there's also a rhema, and that's for your situation. That's, that's that now word. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that are not seen. Immediately, this woman and Jesus at the same time knew something happened. Simultaneously, Jesus, there's people all around him. But at the same time, when this woman grabbed a hold of his hem, didn't even touch his skin, Touch what he wore and was healed by the power of God. You say, why? That was just a targeted, tangible thing for her faith to grab a hold of. That's why planting a seed is so powerful because it's not the money. It's it's the motivation of your faith to sow into the kingdom of God. And the Bible says that when you sow, it'll grow. When you sow, it'll grow. How many is faithful to that? And you've seen that in your life. That when you sow, that God rolls down the windows of heaven and pours unto you blessings that are uncontainable. That, that's just a little side nugget. I didn't even have that in my notes. But maybe somebody needs to hear that because maybe you've been given. And sometimes God has a waiting period. There's seed, there's time, there's harvest. And sometimes you will get something immediately, but then there's times we have to wait. And I feel like some of you may be like this woman, 12 years she had to wait for her miracle. She had to wait for the seed of all seeds to show up, the seed of Abraham to show up. She had to wait for him. But how many knows when God is late, he's on time? How many knows your delays are not your denials? I'm going to say that one again. How many knows that your delay, even right now, those people you've been praying for, your sons and daughters, your grandchildren, it might be delayed, but how many knows they're coming in this year? Can we believe God for that? Can we believe God for the harvest of our grandchildren? And she pressed and she released, and the Bible says that she took action, and simultaneously it happened, his divine will is to release, even now, just as it was then, to release a miracle. I want you to understand this today, That and, and, and listen, I know that we can get into doctrine, and, and many people kind of discredit the God of miracles. It's easy for us to understand the God of salvation. It's easy for us to accept that. You know, the blood of Jesus saves me. But can I tell you, Pastor, and I know that you believe this, that the same God who saves us is the same God who can heal us. If he healed her, how many knows he can heal you? And the scripture is 
There's depths in the Word of God. When you begin to read the Word of God, it's the, it's the Word that was, it's the Word that is, and it's the Word that is to come. That means it's the Word in your situation in this moment, and it's the Word for your steps you're taking tomorrow. And God says here, he, he released the scripture and he says, I healed her by my son Jesus is what he's saying here. And he said, basically what he's saying is I can heal you. My divine will is to heal. My, I want to say that. My divine will is to heal. If you need a healing in your body this morning, this word is for you. And I want you to understand that it's his will to heal you. The Bible said if it lines up with his word, his word is his will and his his will is his word. And so that means if you hear the word of God, if you hear about Jesus, if you heard the word of God this morning and you take action on what you heal, when you begin to move in faith, how many knows your faith begins to move the heavenlies and all of a the sudden there is miracle signs and wonders that follow those who believe. So when you start to believe the word that's declared, when I start to believe the word that's declared, I'm not just hearing the word, but I'm taking action on what I hear. That's when Jesus steps on the scene. That's when Jesus will touch you. When you grab a hold of Jesus and you touch him by faith, he will touch you from the top of your head, as old preachers say, to the sole of your feet. He will change you. And Paul said it like this, I press. What I'm talking about, is there anybody that after all these years, you still have a press in you. You still have a reaching in you that you may obtain some things and some favor and some blessing in the presence of God, but is there still a hunger to get in the presence? Is there still a hunger to go after revival? Is there still a hunger to see refreshing in times of refreshing? Here's how we do it, ladies and gentlemen. It's like the pastor got up here and he went, the, the first thing that he did was he began If we want times of refreshing, we have to start repenting. Come on, somebody. If we want times of refreshing, we have to start repenting. And one of the first ways to repent is say, God, forgive me for not noticing that you're moving. Forgive me for, for, for notifying myself that this is not God. This is not how he moves. Let me tell you something. God will move in different ways. He's mysterious in all of his ways, but he's perfect in all of his ways. I'm here to tell you, he may walk out on the water and you may not recognize him, but if you will grab a hold of who he is, not in yesterday's movement, but what he's doing right now, you will step out of the boat, you'll step into the deliverance, you'll step into peace, you'll step into joy, you'll step into the righteousness of God. I dare you take 30 seconds and praise him like you believe the message. I dare somebody to get up and get out of the boat in your faith and let God touch you he's awesome and he's true this is awesome this right here is awesome this word is awesome and it's still in style. Hallelujah. How many knows this scripture's still in style? Doesn't matter who wants to try to close it. Doesn't matter who wants to try to shut it up. Doesn't matter how they want to mask us. I can still pull my mask down and give God a praise. Come on, somebody. I know you want to wear a mask to each their own. But the thing and the plan of the enemy is to mask us. He's trying to shut us up. He's trying to get us to hold our peace because he knows the power of your shout. He knows the power of your praise. He knows every time you open your mouth and you start saying hallelujah demons and devils tuck their tail and run out of your house and run out of your family Shh. no doubt Paul knew that I have to press he said forgetting those things which are behind me, Philippians 3.13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forget those things which are behind me. Watch this, and I'm reaching forth. Can you see this picture? The woman reached, she pressed, and she's reaching forth, 
And here Paul's saying, I'm reaching forth. I forget what was behind me. Twelve long years has been a mess, but I forget everything because I'm reaching forth under those things which are in front of me. Some of you need to quit turning around to your past and everything the enemy tried to keep you in. He's tried to stagnate you. He's tried to stall you with your past. But I come to tell you, old things have passed away. Forget those things which are behind you. Look forward. I said there's a prize before you because there was a mark 2,000 years ago on a cross. I said he was marked for your miracle. And he said if you'll forget the things which are behind you and push toward the mark, Jesus, then you'll receive the prize. Woo, hallelujah. This woman pressed and she reached. Paul said, I press and I reach. And both of these scriptures deal with the thought that in order for me to obtain my healing, my miracle, uh, the things that God desires for me, even growth in the depths and the dimensions of God, I have to do something. I can't just sit on a cushion comfortably and wait for the rapture bus to come get me. I got to occupy till I come. I just got to keep on stepping and know God's going to keep on blessing. If I'll put the step down, he'll put the stone down. Come on. You may not see the step, but if you'll pick it up, put it down, God will do the rest. All he is looking for is somebody to forget the mess behind you. Forget all the struggle. Forget all the circumstance. Forget the pain. Forget the heartache. Forget how bad it was and start moving forward because what is in front of you is so much better and so much greater than anything you're walking away from. I'm here to tell somebody it's time for you to start walking away from labels. It's time for you to start walking away from generational curses and say I'm blessed and highly favored of the Lord. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. And Paul said I press toward the prize. That means I put an effort with my faith. Faith without effort will die. Faith without action will die. And that's why religion is so potent on the church houses of God in America. Let me tell you why. Because religion wants to stifle and stop the river from flowing. But I hear a remnant that's rising that says I want times of refreshing. I'm looking for the move of God, not yesterday. See, sometimes we leave bad things behind. But now, I think sometimes we get in the good old days. Uh, oh, God moved back here and he, he anointed that one there and they just don't have it like they used to. Maybe you're not in the right perspective like you need to. Because you can be so caught up on what God did yesterday. Come on, somebody. And you're holding on to the revivals and scorching through the carpets of yesterday's revival. When God says, that revival's done, I'm doing a new thing now. And it's springing forth. Shall you not know it? I'm looking for hunger in this place. I'm looking for passion. I'm looking for a passionate praise. That maybe you haven't praised him like this in years. But I'm telling you, I believe if you've got a shout. I believe walls are about to fall in your house. Walls are about to fall. Scales are about to fall off of eyes that have been blinded. Why? Because I still got to reach. I still got to press. I still got a prayer. I still got to praise. I'm here to tell somebody, keep on praising. Keep on confessing. Keep on blessing. There's no doubt that we serve a God who is good, but how many knows that just because he's good, it, it, it hap miracles don't just happen because God's good. We have to reach. He's a sovereign God, but we have to reach. We have to press. Are you receiving this this morning? Paul said, what things I gained, I count as loss. He said, now Paul was a very intelligent man. He knew a lot of things. He could even convince with his speech. He was a very, very good communicator. Knew several different languages. But he said, I forget everything that I've learned in this realm. 
so that I can obtain the resurrection power of Jesus Christ in the kingdom realm. Because how many knows that there's many forms of godliness, but there's a denying in this century more than ever before of the power thereof. Because you can have a TV screen all day long, but till you plug it in, you'll never see any picture. Right? You can look at it. You can see the name on it. You can see the people tell you how brilliant it is and how bright it is and how pix the pixelation is so amazing. But until you plug that into the power, you will never see what they're talking about. Are you hearing me right now? We can be in a form of godliness and hear all about it, but never plug into what we're hearing. Come on, somebody. When you plug into the power, that's when the vision becomes clear. And he said, without that vision, I'm going to die. I'm going to perish. But when I plug in, when I reach, when I press, not just in one season, but every season I press. And God, the God of the good uh, things, the, the God that's the shepherd, Psalm 23 talks about. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. To. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He, he, restore my, he restores my soul. The Bible even talks about that he will prepare the table before the enemy that has tried to take, in, uh, he's tried to take you out. He, he, he prepares a table. Let me tell you, the things in this last couple of seasons that's tried to take you out, I believe that there's a refreshing oil that God is placing on the heads of his people and the enemy's going to watch you dance and the enemy's going to watch you have victory and the enemy that counted you out is going to watch you walk out of your trouble, walk out of your situation. Why? Because you've been at the table of the Lord. You're a Zadok priesthood. There's communion with the Lord and when you have communion with the Lord, you have the unction of the Holy Ghost. How many knows you got to have some gumption before you can get into the unction? You remember they had preached like that? I need gumption for my unction. Hallelujah. And that's the truth. Because if you don't have any get up, you'll never get out. Because God is looking for somebody not only to have faith, but it's time to start working what we have. And when we work the faith, God will work all things together for the good of them who love the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory. Somebody in this place needs a miracle. Somebody in this place needs your marriage mended. Somebody needs your relationship with Jesus restored, refreshed, a renewing in your spirit. And all you have to do this morning is what this woman did. She pressed. She reached. Every time you come into this house, and I know that you do, sometimes it feels like I'm preaching at you, but I'm preaching with you. Every time you come into this house, come with expectancy. Now watch this. Come as the child. You know, we get older and we think that we figured it out. But sometimes I realize that what I was was a child. And a child, you, you, the faith that you had as a child, that childlike faith, that you just believed God's word and you moved on God. Anybody remember those times? Anybody grow up in church like I did? And when the power of God was moving, you just moved with it because you just knew God was moving. You didn't even think about it or question it because your, your faith wasn't perverted by personality. You just knew that God was doing something. You knew that God was moving. And whatever he was moving, you wanted to move into what he was doing. You wanted to get there as a faith. And so every time you come into this house, I hear the Lord say, press in. You remember Jesus when he would move from town to town, when he would move uh, to Gennesaret in Luke chapter number 5, uh, the, the place the, the, where the fish and the, and the multitude of fish came into the, uh, the nets. Do you remember that? And the reason that it did is because there was so much expectation. Guess what? Because they heard Jesus was coming through. And Jesus was preaching. And he was teaching. And it was so many people that they pressed him out. He said, can you get me out a little bit? There's too many people that's pressing against me. This is the Jesus that God is wanting to release to his people. This is the Jesus that God wants to manifest among us again. And he had to be pushed out just a little bit. And he had to teach. And I want you to watch this. That boat became sanctioned with the word of God. That boat became saturated with the word of God. Can I ask you vessels of God? Is your vessel saturated with the word of God? Because if it's saturated with the word of God, you're about to see the wonders of God like you've never seen 
seen before. I'm talking about press down, shaking together, and running over. I'm talking about net breaking blessings. Woo! That's exciting when you understand that if I fill my vessel with the word, I fill my vessel with the opportunities of the wonders of that word. I fill my vessel with the opportunities of the miracles, of the message that's proclaimed. Your gifting, your talent is a billboard for the blesser to speak. Your, whatever it is that God has gifted you to do, your occupation. <laughs> is a platform for the prince to produce promise. My goodness. When you're on the boat and you, uh, you say, Jesus, it's yours. I'm not just going to stand in here and own this and hold it and it's my talent, it's my treasure, right? I did this. No, God gave me the opportunity to provide for my family, so I give it to you, Father. And when I give it, put first the kingdom of God, he adds. How many knows he don't only add, he multiplies. I'm telling you, there's some fish about to multiply in this house. No, no, y'all didn't get it. I said, I'm telling you, there's a harvest about to hit this house. Can anybody get excited like, like this? Look, put your praise on. Let me tell you why I would clap our hands. Because every time you clap your hands, you let the devil know the authority that you carry. Come on, somebody. That's what a praise is. That's what a clapping is. You're clapping and saying, devil, do you hear the sound of victory? Come on. Devil, do you hear the sound of your defeat? Devil, do you hear the sound of that sickness that tried to take me out, but it didn't? I'm still here. I'm still breathing. And the Bible says, let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Sister Amanda, she even renamed the building last night to Bethsaida. Guess what Bethsaida is? The house of fish. Listen, get excited about souls. They're coming. I feel like I need to look at everybody. It's like Amanda said, it's not the blessing. We've got a bless me, bless me, bless me now generation. And, and I'm thankful for the blessings of God. And when you're in covenant with God, go back and listen to that word because it was very, very powerful. You receive the blessing of God. But I don't want to just live for God to receive his blessing. I want to live for God because I love God. Not because of the things he can do for me. But if I love being with him and fellowshipping with him. Then he begins to break open. And he begins to heal. And he begins to break every limit. Every chain. Why do I get so excited? Why do I praise like I do? Why do I still preach like a red hot Holy Ghost Pentecostal preacher? You want me to tell you why? Because he's been good to me. He's been good to this old boy. Every time the enemy tried to take me out, God pulled me out. Every time, every time the enemy, and there's been many facets all through. I can go through here and I could hand you the microphone and we could testify about every moment that God brought us out. You say, well, why are you so excited? Why do you praise Him like you do? Why do you jump when they're singing? Why do you holler? If you only understood where He brought me out of, when I almost died in depression, when I literally almost died in depression, I was going down the road in a 45-foot bus, living in depression, and the enemy tried to kill me. But God pushed me out of my bunk and said, no, that one's mine. I got a purpose and a plan for his life. You're not taking him. This is not his time to be taken. And he's, listen, why? Why do I praise him? Because I should be dead today, but I still have a breath in my body. That's why I give him glory. He's been good to us. 
So every time I come to the house, I can't help but just press in with expectation, knowing the same God who delivered me is the same God who's healed cancer in our sanctuary, the same God who's literally cleared up eyesight in our sanctuary, the same God who's opened and unstopped deaf ears, and I give God all the glory and all the praise, who's unstopped deaf ears, who's resurrected the dead in our sanctuary. There was a woman on a Wednesday night who died, but we just continued working. Worship. We continue to prophesy. We continue to speak the word. And the worship team continued in the prophetic flow. Guess what? She walked out of that place alive. She was dead, but she was resurrected to life. You say, I don't believe it. We'll come to church on next. No, don't do that. I can show her to you. God has a funny way of doing things. And now Miss Dina is, we're talking about, reaching. How many knows the kingdom is beyond our culture? Red, yellow, black, and white. They're all the kingdom. Every piece. It's fra- we're all fragmentary pieces of his master puzzle. And Dina is a Hispanic lady. We've been praying. God's been pulling on our... Hearts to reach the Hispanic community. And here Dina has been resurrected from the dead. Just came on a Wednesday night. Just came to be in the house of God. <laughs> she had no clue that just in that moment, we were, I, I don't remember, I was singing an old song, uh, went to the enemy's camp and took back what he stole. Before the service even started, they were saying, Come alive. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. In the name of Jesus, come alive. In the name of Jesus, this is a house of miracles. What's the next line? We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything to the feet of, in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Listen, everything matters in the spirit. Our steps are ordered. I want you to hear this because God's looking for a body that will function together. And if we'll function together, I'm telling you, we have eyes have not seen it, ears have not heard it, neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared. But the only way that the kingdom of God will manifest among us is if we'll function together. All gifts getting into unity. And that's when God begins to come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Hallelujah. We bring everything to the freedom of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. And the reason that there was such a moving of the Spirit is because nobody thought about what their gift was in that moment. The gift just began to activate. We had nurses that went right to CPR. We had prayer team interceding. We had the prophet speaking over the dead. We had the worship team going full force. And most people would have thought, you've lost your mind. Maybe we have. But how many know sometimes you got to lose yours to gain his? <laughs> Stand with me all over this place. I've got way more word, but I just feel a shift right now. Some of y'all are saying, thank you, Jesus. Here's one thing. You may say, that country boy is crazy. But I'll tell you this one thing. I want his time of refreshing more than I want to breathe my next breath. You say, why do you shout? Why do you shout? I've been emotional today. Because I want to see a move of God. I'm hungry for it. I'm pressing. I'm reaching for it. 
not just a momentary movement, but I'm talking about something that's carried out, something that's perpetual, something that'll last generations. And the only way that we will see times of refreshing is when we have a heart of repentance. Because refreshing only comes from repentance. God is only trying to restore the order of Eden. Are you hearing me right now? The communication with Him, that intimacy. God wants nothing more than to have communication with you. Are you hearing me right now? I, I want you to open your ears because I want you to hear this thing right here. God wants nothing more than to have communication with you. That's why he wants you to be reminded of the miracle. Do you remember when he touched you? Come on. Do you remember when he changed your heart for the first time? Sometimes we got to turn and go back to the first love so that we can turn and look and move forward. Repentance brings refreshing. Refreshing brings restoration. And re restoration brings his return. Come on, just lift your hands. There's a precious shifting in the spirit that's flowing right now. Lord, I thank you for healing that's getting ready to take place because there's some movement that's about to take place. God, we've heard your word, and you said that in your word, that if we hear your word, that we, you said, Lord, faith only comes by hearing. And those who have heard the word, God, those who have heard the word in their situations, whatever it is that they're facing in life, physical conditions, I believe we'll have to line up. I speak to that governmental a number, that governmental order, that there's an alignment in bodies physically today, that people will be healed and changed, not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, Father God. Your spirit is going to move. Your spirit is renewing even now. Your spirit is, is removing cancer from bodies in the name of Jesus. Your spirit is, is removing this the spirit of migraine headaches. Uh, there's somebody you've been struggling with migraines uh, and it's been very difficult even for you to, uh, 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 to, to, to enjoy the presence of God and to enjoy the message because the enemy wants to keep you in pain. But I, I hear the Lord say that I'm healing that migraine in the name of Jesus and it will never come back to your house again. I, I, I have have enough uh, faith to believe that that migraine will leave and that it will never come back to your house in the name again, in, in, in the name of uh, sickness and disease. Uh, Lord, I declare right now that you are moving, uh, that you're moving on marriages uh, that the enemy tried to finalize. Uh, and there's some early marriages that's in this house and the enemy has tried to come in even at the early stages of your marriage. But I declare that the weapons of the enemy are being broken right now. I declare that divorce will never be a word out of your mouth and that what God has put together no demonic spirit can pull apart in Jesus name I just feel like healing is about to release in this place all over just for a few moments I want you to lift your hands and let's worship him let's create the landing strip for the scroll for the promise to land have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way, Holy Ghost, in every house represented. Have your way, Holy We press and we reach. We press. And can you imagine her pressing? Can you imagine her trying to squeeze and get through the crowd? We press and we reach, Father God, because we know we need you more than anything else. God, we need you. In the name of Jesus, everything in the name of Jesus. As I was studying for this word, and as you can see, there's a whole lot more. But there's one thing that I want to bring out. As I was studying, I, I look up words, Pastor, sometimes, just little, just little words, and I looked up the word touch. And funny thing was, I was looking for these, the definition of touch and some things to pop up. And in our modern times, what popped up before anything else was this thing that was called 3D touch. 3D touch. And so the way my mind works and my spirit works, 
I think about three days. How many knows three days change some things? And 3D Touch is a feature on some iPhone models that lets you interact with items on the screen in different ways. Depending on how hard, watch this, you press. Now watch this. This is good stuff. See, everything's spiritual when you live in the Spirit. <laughs> and so how hard you press. For example, in the mailbox list in mail, press a message. Now watch this, to preview it. I press the message to preview it. How many knows that you really will never preview a message until you press into it? Come on, somebody. The Bible said that the kingdom of God was preached, and they, listen, they pressed into it. Turn your neighbor and tell them it's time to lean in to what you're listening to this morning. Come on. It's time to lean into what you're hearing. I heard the kingdom preach, and I pressed in. And it said you can press in to preview what God is saying. Now watch this. Then, press a little deeper to open it. So I can press in just this morning and preview what God's saying, and that's great. Or you can press a little deeper. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. And you can open up what this message is all about. Are you hearing me right now? Why would we receive a gift from God and never open it? I feel a gift of healing right now that's being released in this house. Do anybody feel that? Do you, do you feel that in this place? Lift your hands if you feel it. Just begin to say, Lord, I receive. I, I press deeper today. I'm not just going to preview what your healing can do. I'm going to receive. I'm going to open up this gift. I'm going to allow it to flow in my heart and in my spirit. Here's what I want to do. Real quickly, if you need a healing in your body, physically, I want you to come to this altar right now. Don't even hesitate. Don't wait on it. I just press a little deeper. Come on. You've heard the message. You've previewed the message. But I hear God say, if you will move like this woman moved, if you will press. I believe she had to, you know, people say she had to knock people out of the way. I believe it was a struggle just to try to get to him and, and, and she was probably stepped on and walked on but she knew that if she could just get to Jesus she knew that if she could just touch him she knew that if she could touch him that, and she even began to allow her words to say it if I can just touch the hem of his garment I know I'll be healed I know a, there's a gift of healing that's about to explode in this place. Come on, somebody. I need some intercessors to help me right now. Just begin to pray. Let's function together. Let's function together this morning. God, we give you this moment. God, we give you this time. Miracles, 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 miracles. 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 Come on, just lift your hands and worship Him. This is how the glory comes. Lift your hands, all focus on Him right now. We praise you, Lord. House of miracles. And we bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus.
from the top of her head to the soles of her feet as she is pressing in with her heart, as she is pressing in with her face, not just to breathe you the message, but God, I just feel an appealing coming in you. There's an infilling, there's a desire, and God says it's coming. There's a it's coming, it's coming, the surge is coming from your surrender.
more time. Sing it out. Come alive. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is the house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is your God, or yes and amen, yes and amen, we press into you, the God of my breakthrough, we press into you, you are the God of the breakthrough, we press into you, the God of the miracle, we press into you, the God of the blessing. We press into you. You are the Lord. You are the God that heals and delivers. 
that heals and delivers. We step into you. We step into you. We step into you. The God of the breakthrough. The God of my breakthrough. I press into you. The God of a breakthrough. 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 Yes, Jesus. Would you lift your hearts and hands across this building this morning? And we just give him thanks for his wonderful presence. His presence is, is everything. His presence is everything. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You stepped into our boat. God, that miracle stepped into our life. Jesus, Jesus, thank you, Father, for chains that have been broken, for sick bodies that have been healed, for marriages that have been mended. God, for the miracles of your grace, the miracles of your mercy that have been released and lavished upon us this morning. We give you praise for the word that's challenged our faith. God, that has increased our faith to believe for those things that are possible, so possible in you, Jesus. Praise God. The Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for Amanda and Aaron and Becca and the church there in Nashville. 
We pray a special blessing, God, over their efforts. And God, we just believe that the dreams and the visions that you've given them, God, will never dim. But God, that you will enlighten those dreams and visions in their spirit, their hearts. And remind them, oh God, that what you have promised, you're also able to perform. And God, that you never take us down a road that you're not willing to walk with us the entirety of the journey. So God, may they be that light and the salt in that community, in that city. God's souls being saved and believers being baptized in your precious spirit. God, broken lives being mended, healed, touched. Give them an anointing, Jesus, that is undeniable. And God, I pray in these last days that every church, every church that bears your name will walk in freedom, walk in faith, and walk in favor. God, we bless you for it. We thank you for it, Jesus. Praise the Lord. How many do believe that God works on his clock and not ours? And I really never have thought of that, of that, Brother Aaron, but you know, the truth is, I'm not for sure that woman with the issue of blood could have been healed in year 11. From the birth of Jesus, all the way through the scriptures, even Saul on his way to Damascus, there was an appointed time when God showed up. And I think the key for us as his people is just remain faithful. Come on now, around the clock. And position ourselves that when God is ready, that we are ready. That we wait with expectancy, believing, trusting never giving in to fear, frustration. Sometimes the wait seems like an eternity. May I remind you that God does all things beautiful in his time. There are seasons we weep, we rejoice, we dance. We can't find our dancing shoes. But he said, but I will make all things beautiful. So we wait, God, and we receive by faith the beauty of your blessing, the beauty of your covenant, oh God. But most of all, the beauty of who you are in us, the hope of glory. Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and our Redeemer. And we are humbled. We are humbled, Jesus that you would take the time to turn, to recognize that virtue has flowed from you and to embrace our need and embrace our years of waiting. And God began to write a brand new chapter in our lives. So Father, this morning I believe the Holy Spirit has closed some chapters, some chapters of pain and problem and fear and just depression. And I believe, God, that you have pen in hand and you are beginning to write a new chapter. And we we receive that new chapter, that new lease on life, and we walk in faith and we walk in the blessing of God. Being light in our world, oh God. So we bless you, Jesus. One more time, lift your hands. And we just love him. Just love him, Jesus. I love you. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Lord. For I will bless the Lord at all times, and your praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, we taste, we taste, we tasted. Kura ba shuriye no mo kapate mi shada mande. Kuriya ma shada mande. 
So God, let this wave of refreshing continue to crash upon the shores of our soul. Take us deeper still, even tonight, throughout this next week. Raise us up, God, that we may finish strong because you deserve that. And this world is desperate for it. And we give you all the praise for it in Jesus' name. And all the church said, would you put your hands together and give it up for Pastor Aaron and Amanda and Becca? God bless you guys. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hug somebody's neck before you leave the house. Be back in service tonight at 6. Believe in God for a continuation of what he has begun in us. Begun in us. We bless you in Jesus' name.